You know that feeling you get when you discover a new song? I always get so excited when I find a brand new track from a band I've never heard of and proceed to slowly fall in love with the new piece of music I've found. I'll listen to it when I wake up, when I shower, I'll put it on in the car, and probably even force some of my friends to listen to it. I'll play it over and over and fall hopelessly in love with it until I'm not in love with it anymore. And that's just the way it always goes. You find a new song, develop an unhealthy obsession for it, and over time it either loses its initial magic or you end up hating it altogether. And sure, you can usually go back to one of these songs after not listening to it for a while and appreciate it once again, but the love you had for it, the spark that it had in the beginning, is no longer there. But what if this isn't always the case? What if there is an exception to that rule? Notice that I didn't say exceptions, I said an exception, meaning one instance where this rule does not apply. If there is an exception to this rule, one song that breaks the mold, it would have have to be Mr. Brightside, a song from the Killers 2004 album Hot Fuss. And I'm aware that there's no way to conclusively prove that to you since we're talking about an abstract concept, that concept being a song losing its magic over time or gradually falling out of love with a song. And trying to demonstrate that to you would prove to be counterintuitive to this video's intent since we're here to talk about why Mr. Brightside is still relevant. But still, I can't help but be enamored by the myriad of people that seem to agree with me on this. And as far as internet culture is concerned, this might as well be a fact. Mr. Brightside is one of the best songs ever, and you simply couldn't get tired of it even if you wanted to. I seriously can't think of a song on the internet that has earned accolades of this degree, let alone a song that came out over 15 years ago at this point. Mr. Brightside is seemingly loved more than it ever has been, and is just as relevant as it ever has been, 15 years later. Let that sink in, 15 years later. Together, we'll attempt to uncover the mystery of why slash how Mr. Brightside is still relevant, analyze its anomalous presence in pop culture, and try to understand what this all means in a broader context, as in what does this say about music consumers as a whole. So here we go. If you're a musician or an aspiring musician, I sincerely apologize because I'm about to make you feel really bad about yourself. Mr. Brightside is the first song that the Killers ever wrote as a band. The song was written by Brandon Flowers and Dave Kuning, completely unaware of the impact that the song would have. Since its release, Mr. Brightside has spent over 200 weeks on the UK Hot 100 singles chart and has rarely left those charts since its release. You can even check for yourself, just this last May, it was once again on the charts. It spent nearly 40 weeks on the American charts, and from March 2007 to 2018, it was the most streamed song of any with a release date before 2010, and it was also voted 9th in the greatest guitar riffs of the 21st century so far by Total Guitar Magazine in 2010. It has been on the charts literally every single year since its release. I mean, I could go on all day, but I think you get the point. There's so much to unpack about this song, but I'll start with this. In order to understand the relevancy of Mr. Brightside, you have to understand what it is. And before you go, Nate, it's a song. I'm going to stop you right there by saying, you're right. But it's much more than that. Mr. Brightside is an anthem. And as much as that may make you cringe, you can be rest assured that I didn't come up with this myself. You can find an array of music publications putting out articles with headlines that go, The Killer's 2004 barroom anthem Mr. Brightside is still charting in the top 100, or the 14-year-old rock anthem has gained a second life on the internet. An article by Vice playfully refers to the song as the default anthem of Jeremy Corbyn, a prominent political figure in the UK. Most importantly though, it remains an anthem among the youth. People my age, give or take a number of years, consider this song to be the song of our generation, our generational anthem them, if you will. Similar to how many would accurately refer to Journey's Don't Stop Believing as an anthem of a previous generation, I believe that Mr. Brightside is the anthem of the current generation, no competition. The role that this song has taken on over the years has not only contributed to its sustained relevancy, but it is one of the many components that will likely continue to breathe life into this track for years to come. By now, it should be abundantly clear to you that this smash hit is as relevant and as popular as ever. But so what? That still leaves us wondering things like, why do people consider this an anthem? Why do people like this song so much? Why is there a seemingly infinite supply of memes being created about this song? All of which can be answered with an easy to understand retort. It's a bop. It's just a good song with bright, infectious guitar riffs, incredibly relatable lyrics, and impeccable vocal delivery from Brandon Flowers. But we can't stop there. We have to keep digging in order to have a deeper understanding of why this is such a 
bop. As I was doing research for this video, I made a very interesting observation about Mr. Brightside. It is one of the least offensive songs I have ever heard. In an age where people will get upset and offended over literally anything, Mr. Brightside is able to evade this by being as inoffensive as possible. Like seriously, try to find something controversial in this song that would anger a potential listener. I dare you, just, just try. It doesn't have any lyrical content that could be seen as problematic in 2019, which not only aids the song in having a timeless feel, it further helps to perpetuate its legacy by having the song deemed socially acceptable for the current times. In an era where everything is offensive, Mr. Brightside is not one of those things. Let's compare that to another song that came out in the 2000s that I'd say doesn't quite hold up as well. The song is Marshall Mathers, the title track of the Marshall Mathers LP released in 2000 by Eminem. The lyric in question goes, plus I was here to put fear and to spray fago root beer. I'll let you fill in the blank on that F word because I know that you know what that word is and I don't think I have to break it down for you as to why this song and the lyrics just wouldn't fly in 2019. But nonetheless, the dichotomy between Mr. Brightside and Marshall Mathers is palpable and helps us have a deeper appreciation for the time and consideration that went into constructing the lyrics for Mr. Brightside. When something is timeless, it has the potential to live forever and I wouldn't be surprised if this song does. Mr. Mr. Brightside just has so much going for it because it's not only timeless in terms of social context like we just touched on, but it's timeless in an emotional context as well. The feelings it makes you feel are ubiquitous among the human race. Heartbreak, despair, and jealousy are all emotions that we're bound to face at some point in life, and the killers do a great job at expressing these sentiments in a way that doesn't feel childish or juvenile when you go back and listen to them when you're older. For instance, Blink-182 and Sum 41 are bands that I love that write incredible music, but going back and listening to some of it when not viewed through the lens of nostalgia can make the songs come off as short-sighted and naive, which isn't a bad thing at all, and I actually think that's part of the charm of that type of music, youthful energy accompanied by limited perspective. But my point is, Mr. Brightside isn't like that at all. The lyrics aren't melodramatic, they just seem to be the honest perspective of Brandon Flowers. They aren't written in some overly pretentious way, hoping to wow its listeners with some new perspective on heartbreak or jealousy. He's just being real about what's going on and being real regarding how he feels about it, which makes the track feel so genuine in its intent. This makes it easy for the song to follow us throughout life. Whether you're 12, 20, or 32, you can enjoy Mr. Brightside. Because when I listen to Mr. Brightside as an adult, thanks to the brilliant songwriting, I don't have to view it through the lens of nostalgia to get something out of it. I get something out of it because it's a good song, not just a song that I loved in middle school and it feels good to listen to it again, but it's just plain and simply a good song. The simplicity of the lyrics and easy to sing along to rhythm of the track only works in its favor as those characteristics make it the perfect party song, bar song, and song to sing along to with your friends. Like for real, this song is so easy to sing along to and learn the lyrics to. I mean, for crying out loud, this song doesn't even have a second verse. It's literally just the first verse sung again a second time with a pre-chorus and chorus sandwiched between. And I don't want anyone to get it twisted. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. I just feel it's necessary to point out the simplistic nature of this song as it helps it be that much more accessible to the casual music listener. The fact that it only has one verse helps you remember the song easier, sing along easier, and infect your friends with this ear bug. Because it's not only memorable for the lyrics and delivery, the guitar riff at the beginning is absolutely one of the best I have ever heard and is unmistakably recognizable within milliseconds of hearing that first note. As I for it was voted ninth in the greatest guitar riffs of the 21st century so far, which I couldn't agree more with and wouldn't be shaking my fist if it was even ranked a little higher than that. As we explore the theories and ideas as to why this 15-year-old song is still relevant in pop culture, the reasons for its anthem-like status that it's earned over the years are slowly revealed to us. The reason that this song has been deemed an anthem is of course multifaceted, but I believe much of it lies in one simple word. Versatility. It discusses experiences and emotions that all humans will have to face at some point. It does it in the most articulate way possible, avoiding cliches that would make the song feel juvenile and naive as we get older. It's able to maintain its appeal as we age because of this. There's nothing in the song that could possibly be deemed offensive and is in line with our current politically correct culture, making it nonpartisan and able to be played in any country. You can play it at any party, club, or get-together you may be having. It's absolutely infectious, easy to learn, easy to sing along to, 
the song is the complete package, if I've ever seen one. To wrap it all up and put it into perspective, Mr. Brightside can be enjoyed by any person of any age, of any gender, in any country, regardless of your political biases, and so on. Its appeal knows no bounds and has no bounds. I'm sure there are more characteristics that make this song so versatile, but I believe these are the biggest and most important ones. And after breaking it all down like that, we're able to draw a reasonable conclusion that Mr. Brightside's sustained relevancy lies in the fact that it has become an anthem for many, and it has become an anthem due to its versatility. But there is one more thing that makes the song so versatile that I've yet to touch on. The characteristic that I believe has the potential to cement this song in pop culture forever. And if you've been paying attention, you know what I'm about to say. This song is inherently memeable. An article from Vox took the words right out of my mouth. Mr. Brightside seems to be so inherently memeable that you can get points from just screaming the original lyrics on the internet. At some point in 2016, Mr. Brightside memes found their way into the mainstream. I'm sure they existed prior, but I feel 2016 was the first big year for Mr. Brightside memes. And I believe a lot of the memeability stems from the simplistic nature of the lyrics. It's so easy to switch out the words with other words that rhyme with it to create the perfect meme, not to mention the one-liners that are so easy to make memes out of. You could put, it started out with a kiss, how did it end up like this, on an array of photos, and not only have it make sense, but also be kind of funny. You could let Google finish the lyrics using its autocomplete feature and have that be a meme. I've even seen someone Photoshop Destiny onto their phone as an incoming call to meme the line, Destiny is calling me. It's almost like each and every line of this song has the potential to be memed, and you bet people will. And there's this weird quality about Mr. Brightside memes, and that quality is that I don't get tired of them, and it seems like others don't either. People always seem to come up with fresh, new ways to meme this song, which is consistent with the quality of the song itself, somehow still feeling fresh and impossible to get tired of. When it comes down to it, there's only so much that can be explained about this song. We can theorize and hypothesize all day and draw some reasonable conclusions about why it's still relevant, why it's become an anthem of a generation, and to be clear, I think we've done a fair job of that today. But there are certain things about this song that just can't be explained. I could never tell you why I and many others cannot get tired of this song. We've for sure demonstrated characteristics as to why that may be the case, but I also think it's important to understand that those are just ideas and not concrete facts or indisputable answers. And I think that's central to understanding the success and the legacy of this song. Some parts just can't be explained, which adds a certain aura of mystery to the track, which may or may not further contribute to its appeal as it ages. It without a doubt has intangible qualities that are unnameable and abstract, making it impossible to mimic or replicate. While we're not able to give cut and dry answers about every mystery that surrounds this song, we're left with some great ideas and theories that we can ponder. But most importantly, it gives us a look into consumerism in music. How and why some music is consumed heavily, while well, some isn't. And we're able to form new ideas about that based on the observations we've made thus far. I don't think it would be unreasonable to say that based on what we've discussed today, we can see that people naturally gravitate towards music they relate to. Which I know isn't exactly profound or groundbreaking, but it makes you think. Just because a song has the best production, the greatest sound engineers, has some of the biggest and best in the industry working on it, that doesn't automatically mean that it will be a success, or leave some cultural imprint or legacy. But it doesn't mean it will be a failure either. However, it does let us know that it's hard to create a highly successful song without having something that a listener can connect to. And I don't just mean highly relatable lyrics, just something, some element that a listener could connect with on a deep level, which is something to keep in mind if you ever decide to make a song for yourself, but more importantly, that's something you should keep in mind as you're listening to the music that you love. Ask yourself why you connect with it, and maybe, just maybe, you'd be able to use that information to learn something new about yourself. Without the element of connectivity, why would people listen to music? If there's nothing that makes them feel something, it's hard for them as an individual to even distinguish what they're hearing as a song. At that point, it would be nothing more than a collection of sounds that might happen to flow together well. Music is connection, and when we boil it all down, Mr. Brightside is connection in the truest, most pure sense of the word. The sentiments and emotions it communicates to us are timeless in the way they're conveyed, allowing us to enjoy it to our heart's content, whether we're 15 or 150. May this song live on for decades, centuries, and generations to come. I believe its legacy is just getting started. Mr. Brightside, forever. Have a nice day, and thank you for watching.